Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishingNetwork.com, and today we're going to be reviewing the Live Target Field Mouse. Check it. So here we have the Live Target Field Mouse. It's the iCast Best New uh, Soft Bait of 2011. That is, shows you this is a uh, older lure. It's it's not the newest, but I kind of wish I had a bigger one. It's a field mouse, so it's supposed to be small. But lately I've been seeing a lot of people in ponds and lakes around here that are just slaying it with the rat lure. So I'm like, wow, I bought one of those. And it's the same color, brown. And that's what mice around here are color. So maybe I should use that more often. Maybe I should pull it out and give it a whirl. Top water fishing, I've gotten, you know, really thrown into the frog fishing because I finally got that to work. And they got thrown into the whopper plopper because the smallmouth bass were hitting it and the stripers were hitting it. And I'm like, yeah. And I forgot about the mouse. I forgot about the rat. So that's what this review today is going to be about. So first, let's look a little closer. Now, you see the head here it has that nice narrow mouse head. It has the brown and the dark, the dark top. It's like, a, it's like a gradient down to the white bottom. And what you will see here, it does have front, well, front legs here. So front, yeah, front legs and feet. So, you know, that's good for mimicking when you look below. One good thing is the way this, this tail is really soft and really wiggly, but it's strong. Hey, don't snap at me now when I'm talking. Yeah, here we go. It's strong. It looks like it's attached at this point, but I think it's actually molded in and it's inserted somehow. So it's pretty strong. Now the legs aren't real legs. Some some other makers actually make like legs under right here, or they put them underneath somehow. But this one just has like frog lure type tassel legs, and I guess it works for a frog. It should work for a rat, right? It's really important it has that tail swinging back and forth. Oddly enough, that's kind of like how a snake moves too. So, I'm going to try to get closer here and allow you to see what's going on. So, I'm hoping this gives you a better view of uh, what's going on. My rat, I'm going to cast it off in that direction so you can see. A lot of lily pads right there. Start towards the end. I've had a lot of frogs bites happen as soon as it hits the water. Like, I literally must have thrown it right on their head. Well, I had to because they fit it immediately. I am finding that this is snapping up a little bit in these lily pads. And it's kind of rolling around, which I don't like when things rolling around. That's the reason I like the, the Sibyl Pivot Frog because it has a hook that goes underneath the mouse, not through it, and there's a weight on it that keeps it turned in that direction. And it actually makes it cut through the lily pad. Not every time. I can get on top of the lily pad if I want to, but it cuts through it. Oh wow, somehow my mouse just ended up in the water. Must have shook it. Could have nothing bit it there. Unless it wants to hook itself. Actually, as I looked at this and didn't see the fishing line, I think I would have thought it was a rat too. But the rat can't be that strong. I would like to use this more over open water next to a lily pad. Not through it. Let's try to get right to the middle. Not to the shore, but sideways. Get the most area. I'm off, I'm off in that direction. Can you even see? Can I see myself? Trying not to uh, drop my phone in the water. I usually never fish in this spot. I presume there's nothing here. But it can't be true. It's not, 
It is like two and a half feet max, but there's some lurkers in that range. I used to go further up toward the Union Yacht Club, which you probably heard me say a million times in the Perkins School for the Blind. Also, I didn't tell you about the specifics about this. It's two and a quarter inches long and three eighths out. So it's a light, short mouse. It's really a filled mouse. Now, if it was around four plus inches, I, actually I say five, then it'll be a rat. Look at that. Why doesn't Seville make a rat for? He's more of a saltwater guy, so he's just gotten into fresh water. I'm not going to stay on this side of this thing very long because I think I'm going to have it more, more luck further up. Yep, another spot. Spot where I've had some, some luck for some frog fishing. Even in the summer, it's a little early now, but I don't know. I'm liking about this. I don't know if you can see it that well. Is the mouse is actually pushing up against the, uh, the lily pads and gently pushing them aside. So it's like, hit something, push it aside, move forward. Hit something, push it aside, move forward. It's like it's wiggling its way through all the structure. But if it's too thick and everything's like overlapping each other, it kind of flips things over and that's a little unnatural. But when everything's are, everything is evenly planted next to each other, it's able to wiggle right through everything and I'm working it real slow which I'm not sure how fast the mouse goes through where I've seen one on online so everything I've learned says slower is better because the bass or whatever else pickle pike new time to figure out hmm do I want to expend the energy to eat this this is a real thing this is a big enough thing am I actually hungry right now down that hook is a little bit exposed so it'll snag on anything when it does that that's another reason to go really slow is that it stays on its belly which is why i wish it had a little bit of a weight like actually on the inside of the body of the hook or maybe change the style with the hook on the underbody of it that would be you have to show the hook but Rock. I don't know. Bite it. See, 
this is a uh, how slick the uh, little feet get, the feet tails. They kind of go back and they kind of connect with the tail. And much, I think they're more pat uh, doggy paddlers. And they're not like the frog swimmers where the legs actually meet at the middle of their body. So that's not great. I would like to have some kind of legs there, but if you put legs that aren't attached to the body or molded into the body, like the like the front arms, then you have the possibility of them getting damaged, ripped off, bitten off by whatever fish is uh, coming after it, and then you're unhappy that the is no longer like it was when you first were fish. So that's the reason I catch them with fish, and it's probably not. Some days the fish are biting so good, all you need to do is use the right color Lego block, attach a hook to it, and you're good. How do I know that? I saw a YouTuber do that with a Lego man. That's itself. A small fast will hit the Lego man. It's the right size and color. That's a survival tip. Throw a, throw a, throw a stick in there. You know, give it a nice carving. Make it look like a something. Just from pure like reaction. Well, it's not as good as a worm, a live worm, but why not have some fun? Oh, this got hung up on a really bad. I kind of pulled it under the surface, about a foot, and then it released. So it looked, it really looked like a, the uh, mouse was uh, escaping from it, coming back up. Like swimming. It would be nice if I could play that and then like a bass, nail it. Ha ha! over this kind of dangerous water. Another note, be more natural. Sometimes it's fast. So I got it on home. Watch for the wind when you're casting and trying to fix stuff. Loose line will swing into all kinds of things and get you in trouble. But boom, I got the front, I got the, uh, I got the mouse out. And it looks like I bent it. So I'm gonna fix that too. Hold on. What happened here? Oh, the hook. The hook just got uh, backed out. So you better see the uh, underside of the hook. Why is it all blurred? Anyway, the underside of the hook here. And that got pulled down and got stuck behind the butt of the, the mouse. So we're all straight out now. Let's try it again. It's a little better. Pads here are really thick, but I usually avoid this area, so I like to work in it. I don't know what's over here. I don't have any memory of the bass hanging around, but most of the time bass are just rolling. I think like a one pounder would come through here and act like it's a big dog. I'm gonna get tangled up. I'm gonna get tangled up by a bass getting me caught in all these all these roots and logs and sticks. Not gonna take it up fast. Alright, seems like it's uh, time to move to the next spot. So this will be the last stop. As you notice, there's no little cats here, so 
Why am I using a rack here? Well, because racks just don't go through the other packs. They go through those kind of places. One, because it's what's near the shoreline, and two, because they feel protected by the lily pad. There's nothing I can easily see them from a mile away. But, you know, sometimes the mouse makes the wrong decision. Decides to go out in the open water, get slayed. Boom, come on. Make it happen. Open water, rat fishing. Bring the tail back to center. Kind of is. No matter what door I'm using, sometimes I'll see a blue pill pop up and kind of peck at me. Yeah. Blue pill. Yeah. Mouse is too small. Now the mouse can't get up naturally. So there might be some bass just sitting here right below me, which there were several times. Do a couple more casts and we're gonna call this show a wrap. Now, it's always good when you have a review, like video or a blog post, and you can show a nice test that you used to catch your butt, which is the one you review. And that makes you look good, but most of the time, I don't look good. That's the that's the real world. It's a blue hair and this is the vibe. Sometimes the fish aren't there. That doesn't mean your lure doesn't work. That means you haven't worked enough. You haven't given up enough chance to find the fish or for the fish to find your lure. They're not always where you're throwing, They're not always where you think they are. That takes knowledge, takes experience. That's what the pros do. That's why I fish every day. And when you believe that you can be a pro without actually doing the work, think you're a failure. But that's not true. You just don't have the experience. You just haven't put in the work. And that goes for everything. Everything.
So as you can see, the kids are getting a little close here. They're about to run into the trees, the little boats. So let's finish this off. Nice little rock. That's not comfortable at all. Uh, behind the rock, here we go. I'm Dwight Norris of fishingnetwork.com. And if you want to know how I got out here right now, it's Friday evening. Is evening after lunch? After five? You know what it is. Anyway, I'm out here. You probably aren't. And that has to change. And you can go to the website that's right down below. And on there, top right, with your right of the screen, there'll be a little cloud with a down arrow. Click it. Click that link and get your 10-step process to go fishing at work pdf it's going to help you get out here it's really fast it's really quick it's really short it provides only what you need and nothing more no jargon no miles of pages of like filler content no it's just what you need it's, it's exactly what you're looking for and that's what this is what you're looking for also you probably see something interesting at the top of pretty much all the blog posts and even the homepage. I talked about how you can get lures for cheap. Now that post is gonna be there for probably one or two more days and it's going to change. What's going to change is you're gonna have a chance to get free lures for me. And it's not gonna be free lures forever, it's gonna be like free gear. I'm starting off with lures because, well, that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants something new to try out. Maybe they want a, a rat, they don't know what kind, a live target or, or something else. They want a bigger one, they want a smaller one, they want a brown one, they want a green one. And I've been listening, I've been watching, I've been seeing what people have been using. Like, oh man, this caught one on, etc. Or this is really working here. Or this thing is awesome. Or this thing has always been awesome. Hmm. I'm going to offer that to you for free. And you're going to get it. And even better, which I haven't created yet, I'm going to have an email list that you can get on where once a month, probably even more times per month later on, you're gonna get a chance to get free lures sent to you. Giveaway. You win by draw your hand out of the hat. You get free stuff. I keep saying lore because that's what I have right now, but it's gonna be other stuff. Might be bags, might be rods, might be reels. You know, think of it and imagine it and it might come true. Not boats yet. I don't, I don't have any you know special relationships with boat dealers that want to give stuff away. That would be cool, but I don't. So keep a look out for that. And while you're doing that, go fishing.